Hello and welcome to this week's Bird ID Made Easy with me. This week we'll be covering petrels. Uh, so we'll mostly be covering uh, white rumped North Atlantic petrels like European leeches and Wilson, uh, Wilson's uh, petrel, but we will also be looking slightly at phase petrel. So if we start here with European storm petrel, uh, the first thing to say is the wingspan. So uh, the wingspan is approximately 37 to 41 centimetres. Uh, so it, that makes this the smallest North Atlantic petrel. Um, and uh, so that's quite an identification feature, really. Um, now, the first thing that you look at when you look at this is really, that you see when you look at a storm petrel is the white rump. And this you get also in leeches and Wilsons, but slightly different. Um, this one with the uh, European storm petrel is square and is quite large. However, it does not uh, extend to below the vent or on the vent at all. It's, it's mostly just found on the rump, really. Um, the wings are proportionally quite short compared to the bird and for saying it's a seabird really uh, and so uh, that makes that makes it look quite stubby really and the tips of the wings are rounded uh, which are quite an important feature actually when we look later at leeches um, looking at other features uh, there is the uh, think it's lacking a definite angle here after the carpal joint, uh, and so it's it's quite straight, um, not completely straight, but it's it's not um, quite as big because because of the humerus, which uh, which isn't quite as big in this bird as you find with leeches. Um, uh, so let's see um, the tail on European storm petrels are square. Uh, unlike other petrels, really, it's quite stubby and square after the rump. Uh, and one of the most important features, I'd say, with European storm petrels, actually, is this white bar across the wing, um, which makes it unmistakable with other petrels, because um, other petrels, other storm petrels, don't have this white uh, this white bar across any, uh, North Atlantic petrels, anyway. Um, uh, with such a small bird, it's quite difficult to pick up at distances, so what you're going to really have to focus on is really the jizz of the bird. And so to get that, um, you have to take into account that this is a sparrow-sized bird, really, or slightly larger than a sparrow-sized bird. So when you're sea-watching, what you need to do is you need to look out for a uh, rump pattern, um, tail shape, uh, its flight and feeding habits, and lastly, its wing markings, so on its underwing or on its um, overwing. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and that really goes for all storm petrels. Um, anyway, uh, here are some more storm petrels. You can see the same features, really. And here is a group of storm petrels, so you're not going to see them singly. And if you're on a pelagic, you might get it close enough, really, to see them, to see the good, to see these extra features that I was talking about earlier. Uh, now, going on to leeches petrel, you see that they're larger, uh, with a wingspan of 43 to 48 centimeters. So they're quite a bit larger, actually, and that should be noticeable in the field, really. Um, and the wings themselves are proportionally larger quite um, quite a lot larger when looking at the body of the bird um, and also now this time you get a proper angle after the carpal joint um, and also on the trailing edge of the wing as well you get quite a strong angle usually in flight more than than is seen in this picture um, now as I was speaking earlier about the European storm petrel um, the tips on a leeches are pointed, whereas on a European storm petrel they are uh, rounded. So, and that's that's something that you can really kind of see in the field as well. Um, uh, now, moving on to the rump shape uh, or rump white rump patch shape, 
Uh, we can see here, you can't actually see it that much in this one, but it has a kind of V shape on the rump. And um, uh, and if you're, at, if you're looking at a bird like this at close quarters, you can almost tell the divide, which is not really that... Um, viewable at any closer than really 200 meters away. Um, what else? Uh, so, uh, oh, whoops, Daisy. Um, like the European storm petrel, uh, the white does not uh, go down to the vent. Um, and uh, also, actually, that's something else to see. The Fork tail is quite distinct. If you do concentrate on it, it should be actually visible quite easily, um, according to someone's notes, actually, uh, which I read earlier. Uh, so you'd think it would be quite a small feature, but actually, at long distances, if you concentrate, you should be able to see that. So that's something good. Um, uh, another key feature for leeches petrol, really, is this... Um, pale edge on the upper wing coverts, uh, which you don't get on the um, European storm petrel. Uh, another feature is that the the back of the wing is completely plain black, so it doesn't have this white bar that the European storm petrel did. Uh, moving on now, here are some more leeches petrels in a flock. Uh, you would... I. I'm doubtful that you'd see a flock like this unless you're very lucky in Britain. Uh, they're more likely to be singled out amongst storm petrels, which will make them easier to ID in the field. Uh, so here we have a Wilson storm. Uh, here we have two Wilson storm petrels. Um, and the first thing to say is also the wingspan. So this goes back to the smaller size of the. Um, of the European storm petrel with a wingspan of 38 to 42 centimeters. So once again, the wings are stubbier um, and uh, and it's quite proportionally quite small compared to the body. Um, and here, here it's very important actually to look at the carpal joint and uh, whether it's swept back or not, because uh, when gliding. Mostly this bird actually has a kind of straight trailing edge on the back of the wing, which is a very um, good ID feature for longer distance viewings. Um, uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a very important feature. Um, going down to... Ah yes, uh, the tips then are also rounded, more like the European storm petrel as opposed to the leeches. Uh, another feature which can be picked up at quite a long range, surprisingly. And the tail itself is square. Um, once again, like the leeches actually, it has these pale edgings to the upper wing coverts. And the um, rump patch itself is something to look out for. Because this time it actually does go down into the vent. And sometimes it can even look appear or appear that it's um, making a ring around the whole um, rump and vent of the bird at long distances. So um, that white rump patch will, or that white patch will always kind of be viewable at in all viewing conditions or at, at all angles, really. Um, and so that's something to look out for. And obviously there's the one last feature, which is the conspicuously long legs. Now this this can uh, these can always be seen uh, dangling behind um, the tail, which which isn't which isn't the case when you're looking at leeches or European storm petrel. So that's a that's a one-off thing really. Um, and here here you can really see the length of the legs in these pictures um, when they and they kind of they kind of do this run along the water uh, when they're feeding and they dip their heads down into the water. And which you can actually kind of see in this bird here, uh, and then they kind of uh, patter along the water, which you don't really get that much with other storm petrels or any other petrels really. So that's quite a good um, identification feature when you're looking for kind of jizz, that kind of thing. Uh, now we go on to phase petrel. This isn't um, uh, a white rumped petrel, 
obviously, uh, and they are much larger. So you, there's no chance that you're really going to be confusing this with any other petrol, um, uh, white rumped North Atlantic petrol anyway. Um, and this has a wingspan which is far larger than any of the other petrols, which is 86 to 94 centimetres. And so they're pretty damn obvious. Uh, you you might perhaps mistake one for a large shearwater, like a the back of a um, Corey shearwater at first, but not really. So uh, that's, like I was saying, it's pretty obvious. But if you do get lost, really, it's got this kind of um, darker grey back, actually, than a Corey shearwater. Um, the bill is quite... It's quite a bulbous bill, really, compared to uh, solid black. But the easiest way to tell is when it's really banking and it's showing its under, uh, and it's showing its underwing and belly. So it's got a completely solid white belly um, and basically uh, completely dark wings at a distance, apart from perhaps this triangle, this white triangle here, um, which can also, which is, which is much lighter but that won't really be something that you'll be picking up at a distance. Um, another thing to say is that it has this sharp tail which uh, which is quite diagnostic really for it and uh, I think I said the white belly yeah completely white belly and the head and back are quite a nice and eye-catching light grey really quite um, yeah so that's they're quite an easy bird to really tell I can't imagine it would have much trouble um, telling this, apart from perhaps between a Zinnos, but that's not something I'll be covering today. Um, here's one at a distance. As I was saying, you can instantly see that pointed tail and the dark wings and the completely white belly. So it's, like I was saying, really easy to pick up. Uh, so thanks for watching. Um, I hope that helped you. I then uh, perhaps identify some storm petrols in the future and perhaps even a phase petrol if you're lucky. Um, if you didn't watch it last time, perhaps you want to watch my other video of the of large shear waters. I'm hoping to make a, a, a larger collection to help everyone uh, get a more uh, stranglehold on IDing difficult birds. Thank you for watching and listening.